play football. You want me to go in there and take the ball? It's your fault. You're the coach. The coach told me I was a starting half I lost all confidence in where our team was going that year. And in some ways, this happens here. But sin should not be the focus of CIC. It's a reality and it's the spirit of the age. And when you walk in and you start to influence something and you start to try to live and ask for the power and get the grace to live a life of virtue, people are going to look at you and not accept you. And as I said before, don't look for acceptance. Look to please Jesus. Seek to do his will. For me, looking for acceptance is a killer. A big focus in my life at times. One of the great spiritual writers wrote, if you really want to do God's will, be happy about being overlooked, disdained, and misunderstood. Because it will happen. And the sin of pride will stop you going forward with God because you want to be accepted. So, I'm not real big on this humility bit. Uh, except that pride destroys what God's trying to do through me. My pride. We, it's nice to say, you know, men, men really have a problem with pride. I have a problem with pride. And I need to talk to the Lord about that. That I'll come and serve him wherever he wants me to serve him, whoever he wants me to serve him. In building a company of men, pride particularly will kill our unity so there will be no company. That is a business that's not perfect. If the boss is an egomaniac, uh, you can't get things done. You only work as part of your potential. Well, our boss, our leader, is so humble he carried a crumb. <laughs> he was so normal looking they had to kiss him to pick him out of a crowd. And his last lesson to his company of men was, I'll wash your feet. And that took some doing. He had to get up. He had to get up and do it. He didn't just say something. It was an act of humility. The last lesson he gave them before he went off to his death. And it's a lesson that must be among us. See, I can stand here and talk to you about pride, and we would all resonate with that, but what I really want to do is ask you to, for the sake of building the company of men, be willing to pray for humility. Be willing to pray to take a humble spot in the group. President Reagan used to have a sign on his desk. It was the only sign in his room as he was the president. And I think it really would be good for CIC. It says, uh, there's... No, there's no estimating what man can do, provided that he doesn't care who gets credit. And uh, when you build a company of men, if I bring pride to that, to your company, if I'm in your circle, I'll bring about disunity. And disunity will kill the company of men. And Jesus' last lesson was, wash each other's feet. The greatest among you must be the last. Um, it's important for me to be in a company of men because I believe it's a call from God. And I said, only through the Holy Spirit can you hear that. Only through the Holy Spirit are you hear now. How many of you thought this is the way you'd like to spend January in Kings if you're coming to Kings? That many years ago. With this kind of group. The, the ability to hear is the greatest gift from the Holy Spirit. When we receive more power from the Holy Spirit, you hear, come follow me. You've heard it all your life, but now you hear it in a new way. You hear, learn my ways, read my, read my scriptures, practice a life of virtue. You've heard it all your life, now you hear it in a new way. And you feel power and, and desire to do this. So the gift of ears is the gift of the Holy Spirit. For those who hear, let them hear. And Jesus continues to say, do you hear? What I want you to do is to hear that sin will kill.
still what we're doing. I, I've been involved in this kind of work for 17 years of building groups of people. And I've watched sin come in and pick them off, certain people, because of the spirit of the age. And I have lost some really good friends. And their life led to destruction. It's horrible where it led them. Because they wanted this free expression, because they wanted license, because they picked up on what the age is saying rather than what the gospel is saying. That uh, the change that continually is called for from Jesus as he puts a group of men together, and here he is with his apostles. And, and you know, they were the most unlikely looking guys. They're more unlikely looking than you are. <laughs> In fact, I, I was wondering if he didn't say to his father sometimes, uh, I'll pick whatever one you give me, brother. Nah, him. Let <laughs> me talk to you about him. This guy, Peter, he's arrogant. Uh, he's always, always at, talking at the wrong time. You know, he's saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. He's asking questions when he should be quiet. He's making statements when he should just listen. Uh, he's challenging when he should be praying. I ask him to pray and he cuts somebody's ear off. <laughs> Not but I think the father said to stay with them build a company of men despise people in fact I'm always worried about CIC if it's only for those who are holy before they get in and then I don't belong here it's that we bring God brings his people men from the world we, they, a lot of them don't know how to get on weekends they don't know what they're doing there don't feel like and he gives them their Holy Spirit, and they have no ears to hear. And he says, now I want you not just to this, this be something personal, just you, but it's corporate. Now, I don't have any trouble with me and God. But uh, there's two problems in the world. Things change, and people are funny. And to deal with his people, and to love the brotherhood when they are difficult, it takes some humility, it takes some actual looking at our own life and how we sin. To build unity, everything else in the body of Christ is easy compared to building unity. Everything else is easy. Otherwise, why would we have so many churches? Why would there be so many groups? <laughs> unity is a goal that only the gifts of the Holy Spirit can bring. Humble men who are striving for virtue, have the possibility to build unity. And a company of men that is ununited is, one of, is like going to hell. It's terrible. And what God wants us to do is to build a united group by personally dealing with sin, by seeing how that affects the unity of our local group, and how that affects and impacts on what God wants to do in the world through CIC everywhere. Because we're linked. talk a little bit in, in the last part here about fears. Big strong men don't have fears, right? That's, that's that. We're, we're fearless. Uh, the greatest fear is dying. All fears stem from the fear of dying. But the greatest manifest of fear in the United States is public speaking. People say, I'd rather die than get up there and speak to all these men. Fear is what the Holy Spirit came to dispel at Pentecost. If teaching could have gotten done, the kingdom of God would have been built. They had Jesus as a teacher. If power by teaching and power by association with Jesus could have gotten it done, they would, it wouldn't have been those 11 fearful men huddled in an upper room wondering what's next, disillusioned about what they thought they heard, heard or what they had promised. So, along comes the Holy Spirit, and what was the gift they got? The virtue of courage. When we want the Holy Spirit to work, it's always in the area of courage. The courage to speak out, the courage not to speak, the courage to not to sin, the courage to not be afraid of what others will think, the courage to put away our own desires and come as a servant it takes courage. Courage is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, to be active. Courage should be the mark of a 
man of Christians in commerce. Because not by his own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, he'll serve God in courage. And, see, I know God has a call on my life. And I know God has a call on your life. But for me, personally, it's very difficult to trust him. Oh, I say it, I've been speaking it for 17 years, and it goes like this. And, but to really, really trust him, if I give him everything, what's he going to do? Where's he going to take me? He might ask too much, take me too far. So I resent and resist what, what he's doing in my life. And we all do. We're really honest. I, I hardly believe a man when he tells me he totally trusts God without reservation. Sounds holy. I think I know more about man than that. Because we like to be self-sufficient. We like to be in charge, in control. And if I say Jesus is my Savior, great benefit to that. Tremendous benefit. When I say Jesus is my Lord, <laughs> tremendous fear comes over me because where is he going to take me? What does he want? In fact, sometimes I hear the Lord call my name, I want to say, what do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> Not irreverently, but I know that there's a cost to it. I think it's important for us to identify our sources of fears. What men do is we stop our fears and go forward. But really to act in courage, really to be free and happy, and to have a life that's enviable and people want to emulate or want to join us, uh, there should be a joy and a peace that comes over us that, from God because of the way we live with Him. But when that's working, people want to be with you. You're naturally attracted. There's something about your life that's real and genuine that we're looking for. The whole world's looking for happiness. I used to pray over people who were dying in the hospitals. And I'd say to them, why do you want to go on living? Said, so I could have a good time. So I could be happy. And I think in light of the gospel, the way you do that is you come and serve. You come and do God's will. Then you'll be happy. How happy you'll be. How happy you'll be. How blessed you'll be, they say. It says in the attitude. Be into your poor in spirit. If you strive for purity. So the holiness and the happiness that's linked together for our life is to do God's will. That means Jesus is Lord. So we must identify a fear and allow the love of God to kick it out. Perfect love casts out all fear. So we allow the love of God for me personally to know that he loves me and because if he loves me, I can trust him. Therefore, the fear is no place in me. I can work, therefore, in courage. And I can even have enough courage to ask the Holy Spirit to give me more courage to live for God. You see, one of the problems I'm afraid of is God's going to give me more courage. The Holy Spirit's going to impart it to me, and then I'll be embarrassed. Because then I'll have to do something in courage that might embarrass me. So I have a governor on courage. <laughs> Just so far. I don't want him to go too fast. Because acceptance is more important than doing God's will. Sure, guys, if you do God's will, money back guarantee. If it's important to you what other people think, and it's more important than what God thinks, you will be embarrassed. What a happy thought. That's true. The last thing I want to be is embarrassed. Men hate to be embarrassed. In fact, men get sick on the first tee in the golf tournaments because their friends are going to embarrass themselves. Just with one shot. Courage is what we're praying for. It's a virtue. Courage to get, which would take away the fear so that we can go forward in God. Whatever he asks. You think about it. How many of you here have worked on a challenge with you and given the talk? How many? Ask the room. Over half the room. How many of you here that was the first time you ever spoke for the Lord by doing that? It's wonderful. We're calling you to courage. We're calling you to confront your fears. Now there is a joy and a happiness in doing that, but it's on the other side of it. Like all of doing God's will, in building the company, man, the joy is in the work, but it's not every day. And what confronts 
Jesus is the sin. So here's what we're after. We can change the world in our lifetime. You can. The world that, the God, that God gives you. He gives each man a sphere of influence. Just by being who you are in Christ changes something. And as the company of men come together and encourage and challenge, encourage, in the word, importation of courage, I get it from you. Encourage, challenge, to do the will of God that we see unfolding to us, which is to build a company of men. We allow, we do that because he loves us. That's always the first step. God loves me. I know that. He's done so much for me that in gratitude, I want to do whatever he has. So my first step is to be grateful. I'm grateful for what God is doing for me, has done for me, is going to do for me. That's not my heart. This is <laughs> He might be getting excited about what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Are 
fear should be that we miss God's will. That's the fear of the Lord. He has a plan and a design for you personally, and our fear is to miss that. When we miss it, it should drive terror into our hearts and bring us back to God and say, I want to start over. I want to begin with you anew. I want to do your will. And if it's to build a company, then I'll do what you say day by day. I think it was uh, Tom's way of telling me I'm fit. <laughs> I want you to look at, at your own life now during this time. And I want you to see the questions that are there. But be honest with yourself. You see, uh, in Bloom's book, The Closing of American Mind, he said, the biggest problem in America is that we will not take a critical look at ourselves. So we have this life that is continued without stopping and saying, what sins do I need to war against? And what virtues do I need to pray for? And fight for it. I want to change your fight. Instead of fighting against sin, I want you to fight for virtue. I want you to be excited because God has called you and he has a plan for your life. And I pray that God will continue to give you the grace to show up, to love him, to do his will. He who started the good work in you will finish it, Paul says. Trust that. Be encouraged, for I have conquered the world. Let's look at you.